Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? How to Learn is on. It is I, Van Lathan Jr. And it's me, Rachel and Lindsay. My back hurts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My back hurts. I feel like I haven't heard you talk about these problems. Is, has it always hurt or? It's been hurting. You did something to it. No, it hasn't really. I haven't done anything. It's just. Who, who bought your boxing? Who hit you in your back? You can't hit in the back. You you can hit. You're just not supposed to. You can't hit in the back. They'll run you right out the gym. It's illegal to hit somebody in the back. You can't hit in the back. The I thought like back, the back of the head. Illegal. Yeah, I know it's illegal, but it can happen. But nobody's going to hit me in my back. I didn't get hit in the back. People, okay. <laughs> I, I'm carrying too much weight. And I'm jumping around, boxing all the time, boxing mm -hmm. around, boxing it up, box, box, box. I'm not even sleeping well. Aww. I can't sleep well because the backyotomy has got me up every couple of <laughs> every couple of hours. Look, let's look at my sleep. Let's look at my sleep from the aura ring. The aura ring is very upset. Sleep, Seventy-seven sleep score. That sounds like above. That's a, a passing grade not to for me. me. Not for me. If it look total sleep, I got a good score. Deep sleep, I got a great score. Latency, great score. Timing, great score. Efficiency, only seventy nine percent. Restfulness, pay attention. REM sleep, twenty five minutes of REM sleep. I'm waking up too much to fall in the REM. My readiness, only seventy four. Seventy four for my readiness is not great. Sounds like you graduated to me, Van. These all sound like good percentages, That's but not... I'm sorry that your back is hurting you. Um, it's it sucks. I happen to know somebody who could help. Who Brian? I went to his. I, I went to Brian's back thing. Nicholas back went. thing. His a uh, chiropractic office. Can we put some respect on it? I'm not talking about. <laughs> we know he's a chiropractor. I'm talking about. I got on his back machine. Uh, decompression machine. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Yeah. It helped. I need it again. Yeah, you got to get keep decompressed going. again. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you got back situation. I'm getting old, man. It it is really annoying. I have an old Peloton injury, and it's like the back. Peloton. It's my hip. Yeah. So I've I've like I can't use the Peloton the way I used to because of that injury. Because of the Peloton. That was Peloton? April 2020. What happened? I was going too hard. You went too hard. On you know Peloton. how you can race other people? And during was... during the pandemic, I had my my guys from Texas, 10 a.m. We did it every single day. I was doing too much. I was doing I think I'm doing too much as well. I boxed this morning with the back. I mean, so then I it's like hard for me to feel sorry for you. Who asked for sorry? You did when I'm you told just, everybody I'm, on this podcast. I'm, you I want you want sympathy. I don't want sympathy. I'm just talking. I'm he talking does. about my life. Let's see. I, I boxed this morning. I'm looking at it right now. It was good. I boxed for 87 minutes. Jeez. Yeah. You. I'll. I'll tell you. You're doing too much. Did you go on a walk today too? Uh, did I go on a walk today? No, I'm gonna go on one later. Did you ice? I didn't, but I did. I did foam roll. Okay, that's good. I foam rolled, right? That's I good. did the foam roller, mm -hmm. and then when I laid down in here, and I was talking to the Scooby Doo gang in the room. Our when we're here, when we're here, we got the Scooby Doo gang in the other room. You know, when we're in person, when we're in person. We got the Scooby Doo kids who run the podcast. Donnie is less important when we're in person. Wow. Donnie, wow. You chose a side uh, on the Donnie. last podcast. Donnie. And so I want to let you know, you chose a side on the last podcast. Wait, By the way, people- That's the oh, problem. You think he's only supposed to be down for you. That's not true. Yep, he's yep, never yep. down for me. Yep. Wait a minute. No, we, like, That's here's it. the thing. By the way, I demand that people put the actual picture that, <laughs> that fooled me onto the Reddit. And let me tell you why. Because they have a close-up picture of- <laughs> Mountain Lion, which obviously doesn't look like a real... I called it from the beginning. But the picture that I was shown, the picture that I was shown looks like it's real. It's okay, Van. You got fooled. I got fooled. It I'm happens not... to the best of us. Yeah, of course it does. It happens to the best of us. What I'm telling you is that Donnie could have saved me from making a fool out of myself on the show. He didn't do it. I did. I, I, you did. You're, you're, Donnie, let you it know. made for a great Donnie, segment. Donnie, you didn't, and it's okay. We got the Scooby Doo kids in here. We were talking to them about movies before, and the reality is that we don't need you as much. <laughs> no, Donnie, I would never. <laughs> Donnie, what happened to the snake? Be honest. 
I actually got a picture of the snake. Uh, Send it to the group chat the right snake now. Is it dead? Tail. Yeah. No, it's like waiting in water. Donnie, um, you need to do and what I you sent need the to... picture to uh, Animal Control, and they said that it's not a good enough picture for them to know uh, exactly what kind of snake it is. But it, the way that it, it looks, they don't think it's poisonous. They think it's uh, maintaining the frogs in my yard. <laughs> they think it's feeding off of frogs. Donnie. And they're like, we don't think it's poisonous, but we need a picture of the head. Uh, Donnie, was, you only showed was... them the tail. Do you trust that kind of info? We do this every week. The animals, Van, have said, have had enough. It's you against that snake. You need to take care of it, Donnie. Yeah, it's pretty big. Hold on. Jesus, Donnie. <laughs> Donnie, take care of it. It's pretty big, huh? Donnie, Listen, let, me, let, let, me tell, let me tell you something. Go ahead and kill the snake. And let me tell you why. Because <laughs> I... At first, I thought that you would be the type of person. So Donnie sent the picture of the snake. Let's see. Let's it's just see. the tail. Oh, that's a big ass. Oh snake. my God. That's Donnie. A, that's a big I told ass you. Snake. This thing is massive and it's quick. It's a water moccasin. Can, it's that, not that, a water that's moccasin. That's the best. But by the way, it like looks big here because it's it had just eaten something. Yeah. But it's huge. It's, it's I was snake. not. I was expecting like a, a garden so look, snake. Look, Don, let me tell you no. why Donnie should go ahead and kill the snake, because Donnie is the type of person that would do something like that. So I thought that Donnie was the type of person that wouldn't kill the snake, and would like look for ways to not. Because I don't understand how y'all could just kill that. like this. I don't have time for that. I, I don't understand how y'all could just like kill the snake. The snake. I don't know that snake. I don't know that snake. I don't understand how y'all could do it for real. I, by the way, I spent years killing animals to eat them. I'm telling you, you shouldn't just kill. But you know what, Donnie? You're the type of guy that would sell out his friend. I guess his friend, <laughs> my lion picture. You're also the type of nigga that would kill a snake indiscriminate for your convenience. Let's think about it. Why is the snake dying? The life of the snake is ending. For your convenience, that's it. I'm, the snake ain't done I'm nothing not, to nobody. For your convenience, for your peace of mind, to kill a living to creature, the snake. ain't shit. Donnie, say it with me. I feel nothing. I feel nothing. <laughs> Donnie, kill that thing. I can't lie. I'm starting to feel for the snake. The fact that it's so wily and it knows that I'm trying to get a picture of it. It's, it's scary. Not it's that gross. To Let me tell you what I did feel this weekend. You should weekend. get some dead mice and feed it to the snake. Let me tell you, Donnie, what I did feel this weekend. I mean, you don't want to kill the mice either, but. Silk Sonic. Oh, Silk Sonic. We you have to Silk talk Sonic. about it. Go for it. People, the Thought Warriors were so excited to see Kalika and I enjoying ourselves in Vegas. Kalika and I went down to Vegas just for a quick girls' trip, 48 hours with Silk Sonic. I got to tell you, we have no pictures, no video, because they took our phones, which we were upset about. But at the end of it, it was worth it. We were in the moment. It was a vibe. I don't care what you say. You, you're a hater. You're a Silk Sonic hater. We I'm know that. Silk it's Sonic well hater. documented on this podcast. If you went to the concert, you would have came out singing. Well, you would, you, you would be in costume. You would be singing. You would download the album. I'm telling you, it was such Shout a good Shout out to Silk Sonic. Concert. I've been to so many concerts. This is a good one. Shout out to Silk Sonic. I just saw this clip of this dude that Elvis stole his voice. Have you seen this clip? What? Yes. Uh, Elvis, there's a- Roy old, Hamilton. Roy Hamilton. You saw this. You knew about this. Mm -hmm. You knew about Roy no, Hamilton? No, I learned about it okay. on social media. So, Roy Hamilton is a is an um, a R&B singer <laughs> and Elvis stole his voice. <laughs> Elvis stole Roy Hamilton's voice and Roy Hamilton was going to be the man Damn, they fucked over Royal Hamilton, man. Royal Hamilton passed away in 1969. Wow. Royal Hamilton was going to be the man, but Elvis heard him, and Elvis was like, I got to sing like that. And all of a sudden, Elvis became the man Royal Hamilton Don't did. do this. Okay? Bruno Mars grew up emulating who? Probably Michael. Elvis Presley. Oh, did he? <laughs> doing Elvis. Okay, but he doesn't say. In sound. Hawaii. All I'm saying is Silk Sonic is great. Anderson Pack is great. Bruno Mars is great. I love Silk Sonic. If I want to hear that type of music, I'm going to listen. I'm not, 
Anderson Pack is obviously black. I'm gonna listen to some people actually do that type of music. Why would I listen to Silk Sonic and get into Silk Sonic cosplaying? It's not as cosplaying. That music when I can go listen to uh, it's probably a nigga somewhere right now in some dive bar somewhere killing it. See, this is trying the thing. to get it. Let me ask you a question. He y'all sounded love, like Bruno Mars. He's he sounded like Anderson Pack. Y'all love Silk Sonic. Do y'all go up for Anthony Hamilton and the Hamiltons I've like to, this? I've been to Anthony well, Hamilton saying, concerts. So don't, Anthony Hamilton is doing this music. Anthony Hamilton singing his been. ass off. Do y'all go up for Anthony Hamilton like y'all go up for Silk Sonic? I've been to an Anthony Hamilton concert and it was amazing. I know. I know it was because because he's doing it because that's the way he sings. That they okay, you could say all this, but you haven't been there in concert. The musicianship is amazing. I'm sure it was. It's, they they put awesome. on a fantastic show. I encourage anybody if you can, if you can, it is a great show to see in Vegas. And- Go see Silk Sonic. Support Silk Sonic. Listen to Silk Sonic. <laughs> all of that stuff. All I'm saying is, shout out Royal Hamilton, man. Shout out Royal Hamilton. <laughs> it is not- those are not connected. Shout out to Roy Hamilton. They're not connected. Did you? What did you think? What emotions did you have when you saw the Roy Hamilton situation? I knew it. I mean, you could tell Elvis. You know. We've always, but like, we've always known that. Have you seen the Elvis movie? I haven't seen it. You have not? No. Was it good? The beginning of it starts off where he, lit, he is in church and he's talking about, you know, his, his the influence. Yeah, like it. they kind of acknowledge it. It's Roy great. Hamilton. It's okay. This is, this is Roy Hamilton. Come on, Come on Roy. So that's so that's Roy Hamilton. Here comes love. How many views do you think that got? Couple thousand. And she got 20,000 views. Let's go to Elvis Presley real quick while we're talking about... Let's go to Elvis Presley. Uh, Elvis Presley mix. Oh, Elvis Presley, if I can dream. 30 million views. Elvis Presley, Jailhouse Rock. 235 million views. Didn't a band member with Elvis acknowledge that he took his voice? Yeah, yeah, they talked about it. On the, the guy mm-hmm, was on the thing, mm-hmm, but y'all mm-hmm. just trying to look. All I'm saying is this: it's not the same thing. It's not. I'm not saying it's the same thing. I'm just saying <laughs> you did support support people. The so, people so that's who actually should doing they it. be supporting in addition to Anderson Pack and Bruno Mars? Let them know since you're since since you you claim that yeah. they're still they're cosplaying. Cool. Support who? Anthony Hamilton. Support. Jaheem. No. Support. Not the, not in the same way. Belial. Support <laughs> PJ so Morton. Good. Support PJ Morton. Support PJ Morton. Support him. Support PJ Morton. I'm not in any way, man. Support Silk Sonic. Support PJ Morton, man. Listen to PJ Morton. You know what I'm saying? Listen, it's people out there that's doing. Listen to Ian Vaughn. <laughs> Listen to Ian Vaughn. That's what you should have said first. You know what I mean? Listen to people out there. I'm just saying, man. I'm not hating on Silk Sonic. I'm glad y'all have fun. Okay. We have Pete Aguilar, congressman from California on the show today. He is also part of the select committee for the investigation into the January 6th insurrection. He's going to answer questions, not just about the January 6th commission, but also we have to ask him about the ongoing saga in Washington regarding the... uh, a covering of classified materials at President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. Pete Aguilar is going to be on with us later. But on the other side of this break, we're going to get into the big deal of the day, which is, of course, Trump, 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 Trumpity Trump, 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 Trump. All right. Feds investigating Trump for potential Espionage Act violation. Search warrant shows. So we now have the search warrant. We now have the receipt. We now know that the DOJ is... Uh, investigating Donald Trump for potential violation of the Espionage Act, uh, having possessing materials that rise to the highest standard of classification in the United States governmental system. The warrant was first reported by Breitbart, shows an initial inventory page of 28 items, including various classified TSSCI documents and miscellaneous secret documents. Okay, this has set off a firestorm 
of debate in Washington about what's prudent and what's not prudent when it comes to a, uh, a former president. The scope of the powers of the president to declassify materials. Also, uh, what it would mean if Trump really did have these materials at Mar-a-Lago and they were uh, SCI classified documents. What the hell do you think, Rachel? Well, I think it's the biggest fears that people had about him coming into office and the information that he would be privy to or being realized. Right. Right. When he was when he was running, we were scared. Uh -huh. When he became the president, we were terrified. And the fact that he took classified documents, not funny. I don't know why I'm chuckling into his home. What is it? 11 different. What was it that you read? 11 sets of classified documents. It falls right in line with what we thought would happen. But now we're here. I think the scarier thing is the fact that he still continues to make excuses as to how this could have happened. Uh -huh. And his supporters are still defending it. Well, supporters like, will defend whatever. But, that, but, but like that's not normal. We're, at, we're dealing with an unprecedented situation at uh -huh. this point. And it's of a former president, right? And he's mishandling some of the country's most sensitive secrets, we believe, right? Yeah, because no one knows yet. No one knows yet. But we know it's classified documents. Uh -huh. With January 6th, and now this, you know, if they do find the information that they have outlined in the warrant, people are still, all it is doing is turning people against democracy, against the institutions, against the government, rather than calling it what it is, they're continuing to make excuses and distrusting what's already been in place. I keep saying it's terrifying because that's that's so, what it is. I, like, a couple of things yeah. here. We know that they did find documents marked TSSEI classified we know that they found that that's in the which is the highest level the highest level we know that they found it what we don't know and this is what some people on the right are saying is whether or not those documents are classified that now so a document so, so does that matter does that they, matter is there I'm, I'm, here to, I'm here to give you the 360 <laughs> view if there have been in the past documents that at one point were classified right Mm -hmm. Then they become declassified. Once they become declassified, you can file a Freedom of Information Act and get all the documents and, and release them and put them in the goddamn Wall Street Journal and do whatever you want, okay? So the question is, were these documents, did they hold that classification when Trump removed them? Did they hold that classification? Do they hold that classification now? All these documents that sensitive? And even if they aren't, even if the documents are, are, uh, are declassified because the president... It's not actually clear what the president's powers of declassification are. And what I say is we know that the president can declassify documents pretty much at will. But normally when the president does that, there is a very uh, concrete paper trail to why it was done, how it was done, who all knows that it was declassified. Because the president just says, hey, this, this document is declassified. Doesn't mean that everybody knows. And you would have to let everybody know for it to be done the right way. And this is where the Espionage Act, the second part of it, comes into play. Mm -hmm. So the Espionage Act makes it illegal for anyone who has information related to national defense to use it to injure the United States or to the advantage of any foreign nation. However, it also says it's illegal for anyone who lawfully has possession of information related to national security to provide it or attempt to provide it to those not permitted to obtain it. These individuals also cannot willfully retain and fail to deliver documents or other materials on demand from, from an officer of the United States who is allowed to receive them. All right. So that part right there is the part that it seems as if Donald Trump is in jeopardy of having violated. Mm -hmm. Anyone convicted of violating the law could face a fine or 10 years in prison. Mm -hmm. During the Obama administration, eight people were charged with leaking national security secrets to the media under the Espionage Act more than all of the previous administrations combined. At least six more leakers were charged during the Trump administration. So there are a lot. there's a lot of talk about what particularly is wrong with this. 
is it wrong that President Trump had the documents? Why would he have the documents? That's it. Like, what's the purpose of having the documents? Why, after he was subpoenaed for the documents, did he surrender all the documents, have a lawyer certify that they had given them all back when we know now that that wasn't true? See? Um, And so uh, we're going to talk to... Congressman Aguilar about this a little bit later, but the reality is there's a bipartisan effort right now on the Hill to get um, some sort of briefing from the DOJ to exactly what the contents of the documents found in Mar-a-Lago are so that people know just how dangerous they are so that they can then either be on board or cast aspersions about why Mar-a-Lago was entered by the FBI. Well, you talk about them being on board based on what the information sure, is. Yeah. But I think you just pointed out something which is key. Your attorney said that you had handed over everything that was classified. And here we see that there are 11 sets of classified documents. Mm-hmm. Why are you lying? Why is there a need to lie? Right. So it doesn't matter to me whether or not they were or they weren't. They, you know, what the information is, you felt you at least had something where you needed to cover it up. You needed to lie about it. That's the question that we're never going to get the answer to of why did you have these things? Because didn't he say that everybody takes things home from work from time to time? There have been a number of different reasons as to why he said he possessed these documents. Well, he's they've. As President Trump does, what happens is he comes out. Somebody says something about him. He gets ahead of it. He crafts a narrative. And then he switches the narrative up based upon the information that's made available. So at first it was like they're leaking stuff. Mm-hmm. They're they're planting stuff. And then after the they their planting stuff didn't have any legs, didn't go anywhere. Now it's there was a standing order that whenever information left right. the White House, it was automatically declass, declassified. Seen multiple things with multiple attorneys and multiple uh, experts in classified materials, that's bullshit. That's not going to hold up. That's ridiculous, right? Nobody's going for that. The reality of the situation is that what's in the documents does matter. And the reason why it matters is because that's going to be the justification of the urgency of the Justice Department to go into Mar-a-Lago. What made them feel like they had to do that then? And I think politically, people Mm. are looking to 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 make that make sense, right? Because look, the way I look at it is this: they had subpoenaed these 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 documents a long time ago. Mm-hmm. They got some stuff, they didn't get it all. So there was a a call from the National Archives to give this stuff back, right? There's some people that said they could have enforced the subpoena in court and had President Trump give it back, but they didn't do that. They skipped that step and went straight to going into into Mar-a-Lago. Um, then there's the timing. In which the warrant was 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 created, mm-hmm. and they went. The warrant was created on a Friday. They went on a Monday. So then there are some that are saying, if things are so urgent, why would you wait three days to go into Mar-a-Lago if it was that urgent to where you had to do it? So there are questions that need to be answered. I don't think those questions are material to what actually happened. I think those questions are cosmetic, right? And yeah. so I think what people are trying to do is figure out how they are going to make this situation make sense for them politically. Absolutely. You said it matters what's in the document. And the reason I have a problem with just saying that, which of course it does, but I think that that also gives people an out. If it is deemed that they are no longer classified, I think it takes away from the act itself to me is the problem. You took classified documents, allegedly, you allegedly took classified documents and then lied about having some of them. No, he did. I mean, we we know that. So no matter whether they're declassified at this point or not, right, based on the information, the act alone and then the lie, the subsequent lie, you might not know that they're declassified at this point when you took them. Again, we'll never get the why, but you took them for a reason. So to me, if it, if it's if it's the what is in them. And then it's deemed that that's not an issue. They're going to take that and run with that. That's the problem to me. And I think that's why you have to focus on the act of it. So the reason why it it matters to me what's in them is because it doesn't really matter to me whether or not they're classified or not. 
Okay. It doesn't. What matters is what the information is. Because if the information is deemed sensitive, right? Mm -hmm. If the information is deemed sensitive, and when I say deemed sensitive, I mean if the information is like, if the information in some way is, is if it's deemed that the information has a, a significance important to importance either to national security now or national security in 2021 or 2020 or 2019 and they were unsecured at mar-a-lago that's a huge fucking problem right yep. like a lot of these documents uh are there's a protocol for the way that they are safeguarded like when we're talking about classified stuff we're talking about rooms that are clean we're talking about some real hush hush the good fucking shepherd spy shit in the way that they show these in, 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 like this information that you read in whatever all of that so the classification of them doesn't really matter if we're talking about things that are deemed pertinent to like uh things that are deemed um important to nuclear weapons or nuclear security the nuclear strategy uh people talk about the nuclear codes themselves obviously that that's something that's fluid but the nuclear codes are essentially the way that the president proves that he's the president before he commits, uh, uh, before he <laughs> right. orders a missile strike, right. right? So obviously something like that, even if those codes are obsolete, you would never want anybody else seeing that because you want wouldn't want them to try to break Absolutely. And, and, and get... <laughs> And get new codes. We don't even want them to know how we do that. Right. We only we, like, we don't want them to know. For all of us, like the nuclear codes really could be Obi Wan Kenobi, and we would never want them to know the way that that looks or how that is. Mm -hmm. And there are still there are still people who obviously buy like old codes. They buy obsolete nuclear information. They buy prior strategy stuff they buy information they would they would want to have anything that they could that would get them a foot into our intelligence apparatus and so that's why it's important what's in there so we can understand or at least uh forget about politicians on the hill because we might never know this right mm -hmm. but the the intelligence community can understand the gravity of the offense because the worst the shit that's in the documents is the more flagrant him taking them also is, right? The the more fucking terrible it is. Mm -hmm. And so look, man, I don't know who wants to take Donnie's the type of person that would do that. Donnie would do that. <sighs> Poor Donnie. Donnie is the type of person, Donnie looks like a petty cash thief. That he's in the <laughs> office and they got petty cash for <laughs> to order some pizza. And that Donnie would be the type of nigga that would like not steal the pizza because he does want everybody to eat. He does have a good heart like that. <laughs> but he would be the person that would like, yo, I'm going to buy four pizzas, $40. The pizzas were actually $30. Donnie pockets 10, 10, $10 worth of petty cash. My mama stole petty cash. Okay. Stop. stop. Why Why are you telling everybody's Hold on for business? A second. I got to call mama real quick. Hold on, real quick. Hold on, Donnie. I don't know what you're gonna have to do to get back in Van's good graces. It's you're gonna have to suck up to him. <laughs> I don't know either. I'll no, I'll, sa I'll sacrifice option. myself. It's, you could turn against me for a second. Nah, it's <laughs> fucked, Donnie. You <laughs> fucked yourself. You know what I mean? Let's call mom real quick and see if we can get the petty cash story. Let's... Hello. Hey, mom. You're on the podcast right She's now. So professional. Oh, okay. Ah, she's ready. She's ready. Can you can you can you tell everybody the petty cash story from back in the day? Uh, what do you mean? And that's what I love. That's right. Deny, the petty deny, cash deny. story from the law office. Can you tell them? What do you mean? Love it. Love her. <laughs> I mean, what do you mean? Uh, do you want to do you want to talk about what happened with the petty cash? Do you want to? You want so you want your mother to be on the podcast <laughs> to talk about a situation that happened almost forty years ago. Okay, in which she was accused of something that turned out to be a terrible situation. And people who she may have offended at that time are now judges and shit like that. <laughs> you want me to go into detail about somebody accusing me of taking something and then me? Coming back, trying to go into their place, and then a no, no, okay, 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 okay. Hey, no, don't tell too much. Judges' names, <laughs> don't, don't tell too much. Names and 
all kinds of people Mama, who were involved in it. Mama, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? I'm feeling, I'm feeling wonderful. Now I every, had a pair of thyroid taken my out. mother had a pair of thyroid taken out. She had surgery. My son is calling me. She sound you sound great. She sounds good. She had a surgery. We just wanted to check on you, Mom. We don't really want to talk about. I'm really doing fine. The petty I'm glad cash. You guys called to check. Rachel, I, I got your book. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I, want, I want to see what's going on. Well, I know we need to know what to miss. Then, of course, I've read yours, <laughs> yeah. right? You, and now you miss. call your mom. You call your mom. Oh shit! I can't believe it. I'm sorry. I love you. I love you. One too. day, one day for okay. So this is what we're gonna do. Okay. We're gonna have another Parents' Day on Thanksgiving, okay. and and we're gonna allow you uh, to be able to come on and, and tell the petty cash story. Well, do you, why do you want me to tell? There's so many because he's always stories. telling your business. <laughs> I, I mean, there's stories I could tell that are just magnificent. I mean, they're great. Why do you want to just me to tell that particular story? What does it mean to you, son? It's just funny. You think that's funny? It, it was. It, it, it's not. I know. It, we can look back at it and laugh. Now. Okay, mom, we gotta go. I'm gonna call you back. I love you. Okay. Love you too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Your mom has a beautiful voice. She can does. she sing? Hell yeah. Yeah. She's a great songstress. Yeah, she has a really pretty voice. All right, Deshaun Watson. He has an interview. He apologizes to all of the women that he's impacted in this situation. Donnie, snake killer, give me the audio. Okay, Deshaun, as you get ready to get on the bus, let's just start with this one. It's been 19 months since you played a game of competitive football. How are you feeling about that? I'm super excited. I'm excited to get out there with my new teammates and go out there and compete. Um, each and every snap, I want to make sure I cherish that because I'm not sure when the next time I'll be able to get out there with those guys. So. Um, I'm, I'm super excited. As you say that, your eligibility is still in question, and although this appeal is ongoing, I have to ask you, the initial ruling from Judge Sue Robinson made a very specific point of saying that your lack of remorse played into her decision-making. It's been a part of the narrative surrounding you. What is your response to that? Look, I want to say that I'm truly sorry to all the women that I've impacted in this situation. Um, my des decisions that I made in my life that put me in this position, um, you know, I, I would definitely like to have back. But I want to continue to move forward and grow and learn and, and show that, you know, I am a, a true person of, of character and I want to keep pushing forward. Grow and learn. We fully expect that there will be some time that you are away from the team. What does your growth on a personal level look like? How are you spending that time? Uh, I know I have a lot of work to put in, uh, especially on the field, to be able to make sure I'm ready to play uh, whenever that time comes, whenever I can step back on the field. But also, the biggest thing is I want to continue counseling, and I want to make sure that I'm growing as a person, as an individual, uh, for my decision making on and off the field. And I want to make sure that you know I'm just evolving in the community as much as possible. And that's for the Cleveland community, that's the NFL community, and beyond. Okay. We appreciate the time, Deshaun. Thank you. Rachel? I know I have a reputation on this podcast for judging people's apologies. This is what I'm going to say. One, obviously it's not my apology to accept. You know, it's for the women that he, what is the word he used in his apology? Impacted. That's the word he used, impacted. It's for the women that he impacted. Um, I will say that the timing is suspicious. Uh, he, we just saw the, the, the ruling that came from Sue Robinson, judge, who noted, made sure to note his lack of remorse, which the reporter there mentioned. And it just seemed right on time that he was going to give out this um, interview. Did this interview air before he played? This weekend? Sure. Okay. Well, the interview is airing around the weekend that he, the weekend that we see him take the field. There's been a lot of criticism, uh, strong reactions. And the biggest one, I would say, is the fact that he hasn't apologized. And so the fact that it's been this long and now you're apologizing as your case is currently being appealed and it's a possibility that you could have be suspended for even more games. The timing is interesting. 
timing is interesting. The timing is interesting. I think we can all acknowledge that. I mean, I think we can acknowledge that. Deshaun Watson, the timing is interesting. But I like if he's sorry, he's sorry. That's I can't, you know, it's hard for me to say he's not. But circumstantial evidence would say that he's saying what he needs to say because that's just the next step to move to move on. Now people can say, oh, well, he did apologize. You asked him to apologize, he apologized. Well, people have been asking you to apologize. Um, this has been going on for over a year at this point since the first lawsuit was filed um, and not and longer since the first time you impacted one of these women. So, you know, it's convenient. Um, so apologies are best received after either work or consequence. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Agree. So either you work your way out of the, sp the position that you were in before or you go through the consequence. Right. Because at a certain point, somebody gets kicked in the nuts enough time for something that happened to them. The human nature goes, OK, stop kicking them in the nuts. I've talked about this before when I was working at TMZ. TMZ. Uh, we got Michael Richards out or another photographer got Michael Richards out. Of course, you guys know who Michael Richards is. He's crime where he fucked up at the laugh after he nigga, nigga, nigga. And it was over for Mike. Um, Semi over. He still got a nice, juicy guest spot on Kirby Enthusiasm, but that's what being white is. Somebody got him out and they asked him, they said, do you apologize to the black community? This was like in 2013, 2012. This is years after. He had already given a bunch of different apologies and I was like that's cloud that's cloud chasing like I mean I didn't say that thing because that wasn't a thing but I'm like come on man mm -hmm. obviously he's apologized to the black community a bunch of times if if either he meant the apologies that he's given before or he didn't but asking him to apologize again right. is kind of fucked up because you've seen what's happened to him right so either consequence or work Deshaun Watson has really had neither mm -hmm. at this point Deshaun Watson has maintained that he didn't do anything. Correct. Number one. So if he didn't do anything, then there's actually nothing to apologize for. And in this situation, I can't probably I can't properly get with the apologize if I hurt somebody. And the only reason why that doesn't work here is it because never works. By the way, it it works sometimes. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That bitch do be busting. Even in therapy, it's like that's not an apology. That that bitch we'll be busting that. though. That apology, if I hurt you, hey man. If I, if I, you know, I'm not apologizing for what I did, but if you ain't like it, my bad. You know what I'm saying? That bitch be busting. I like that shit. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but in this situation, it won't work because either you nutted on somebody without their consent or, or you didn't. And there's like, if you're, if you're apologizing for nutting on somebody without their consent, then it should probably be pretty specific. You should probably say, hey. It was an accident that I nutted on you. And then you sell that to them. But until you ha until you come to Jesus on like what actually happened in those rooms and what actually went on and gives people some clarity into where your mind is, they're just waiting on you to nut on the next person. And that's just the way that it is. You can't really, he can't split the baby here. Like there hasn't been any consequence and it doesn't seem that there will. People might say that the money is, that's not that big of a deal to him. Yeah, it's not he's like he'd love to pay that off. It hasn't been that big of a consequence to him yet. His personal his personal reputation has been impacted. Absolutely. A absolutely true, but it hasn't cost him anything. Nope. Financially. Well, even financially, he signed one of the richest contracts in the history to in in the NFL after all of this stuff Correct. came out. So it hasn't really cost him anything so for the sean watson the two the question is number one why are you apologizing that and then exactly the, the, the second question say. is has have we seen anything to make that and that, that's the only thing that i would say well he i was she talks about growth and stuff like that in the interview but to me the follow-up question is exactly what you said the moment that he said i apologize for impacting why now why? You've maintained it for this long, even in a proceeding, like a legal proceeding. Right. Why now? And that's why I can't take that whole interview that seriously, because it seems very much so a PR, because anybody else would have said, why did you wait? Why now did you wait that? And I'm sure they had approved questions that they had to ask. And so to me, I don't really understand. I need that answered. Sorry, before I can fully understand what you said in that interview before I, be, I can fully grasp I'm going to be real with you. Growth is very important. Mm -hmm. 
And I support growth. I support people not being the same person on Monday, August 15th, 2022, whatever that they will be in 2025. You can't grow out of nothing on people's legs and arms without consent. You got to work through that. Like He said counseling. Okay. Well, so the first step in counseling out of nutting on people's arms and legs without consent. So I'll make sure that we keep discussing coming on people Mm -hmm. is the allegation. Nutting. Mm -hmm. Like think about, think about how it feels with somebody, like when you get somebody sweat on you and you didn't want to touch somebody that was sweaty. They're sweaty. If you're sweaty and you give somebody a hug, you apologize for being sweaty. Mm -hmm. You say, hey, my bad, I'm kind of sweaty. You know what I mean? Right. You know what I'm saying? You say, hey, my bad. I'm kind of sweaty, right? I've been sweating. My bad. Whatever. Think about the gulf between sweat and nut. Yeah. Sweat is here. I got it. It's an inconvenience. Nut is on the other canyon of fucked upness. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is the first thing that you would have to do is say, hey, I'm Deshaun Watson and I nutted on these women without their consent. And I have to figure out why I didn't think that was that big of a deal. Publicly or in therapy? Publicly. Mm-hmm. Because the reason why I would say you have to do that publicly is because we as a public understand that there is a gigantic fucking issue with nutting on people without their consent. If you... Remember Silence of the Lambs? Donnie, you remember Silence of the Lambs? Yes. In Silence of the Lambs, Clarice is walking through an insane asylum, an insane asylum where they're holding Hannibal Lecter. Mm -hmm. Do you know what someone does? Spits. Wrong. They nut on her without her consent. Donnie, do you remember this? Yeah, the guy like throws it at her. He takes the nut and he throws it at her. This nigga's in an insane asylum because that's how fucking crazy you'd have to be to do something like that. It's in Silence of the Lambs. Gotta do more than that. All right. Take out where I said spit. <laughs> Take it out. <laughs> Take it out. Uh, on the other side of this break, Congressman Pete Aguilar is going to talk to us about not only the January 6th committee, but also about the ongoing investigation and conversation around the FBI searching former President Donald Trump's home in Mar-a-Lago. It's on the side of this break. Very special guest on Higher Learning joins us right now, Pete Aguilar, who is a member of the U.S. House of Representatives. He is a man who is very consequential in American society right now. Um, as, as he is... Uh, a part of the U.S. House Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. And I got to, to be honest with you, Pete, there's a lot of smoke and talk around the January 6th committee, all right? But there seems to be even more talk and smoke around happenings in Washington right now with the ex-president um, and exactly, you know, what the hell is happening and what's going on. So we appreciate you joining us on Higher Learning today. Uh, Very happy to have you. Um, But I guess the first question that I'll ask you that a lot of people are probably wondering is, is the FBI uh, serving a search warrant or using the search warrant to go into Mar-a-Lago and um, investigate the former president's belongings or his potential uh, collection of classified documents. Is that in any way, shape, or form related to the investigation into January 6th? Well, first of all, Rachel and Van, thank you so much for for having me and introducing me to your audience. I appreciate the question, Van. I think this is something that people are asking across the country. Uh, And my answer is, I don't believe so. Uh, there are some things that the Department of Justice uh, is doing that that uh, none of us know, um, but it isn't. Uh, we don't believe that these are connected 
uh, we are on a parallel path. Our investigation is a congressional investigation, and we're supposed to find out what happened on January 6th, uh, what were the causes of January 6th, what led up to it, the factors uh, that led up to uh, the insurrection at the United States Capitol. Uh, what the Department of Justice is looking at, uh, we believe, based on what uh, we have seen, is uh, specifically tied uh, to documents that the former president had in his possession uh, at Mar-a-Lago. Um, now, when this is all said and done, there may be some overlap in witnesses that uh, each entity has talked to, um, but what they are executing in the search warrant side is uh, completely separate and apart uh, from our investigation on January 6th. In response to the January 6th committee and the, the hearings that we've seen so far, what do you think the response has been from the American public? I think many in the American public were a little bit skeptical uh, when we created this committee. They didn't know uh, what it would do. They knew that the president did something. He didn't act appropriately uh, leading up to, to January 20th and the peaceful transfer of power, but they didn't quite know what happened. They just saw the images that we all saw on TV of violence at the United States Capitol. But what we do know is we have done eight public hearings uh, to date. Over 100 million people have tuned in to a portion of these hearings. And even if folks just tuned in for a little bit, we know that they have picked up uh, on the fact that we are introducing them to individuals generally who work for the former president of the United States who are telling the truth and are talking about uh, the former president's efforts and those around him uh, to stop a peaceful transfer of power, which really is the hallmark of a democracy in the democratic system. Do you think that in any way, whether or not there's material evidence uh, that links anything that the president had at Mar-a-Lago to the investigation that you guys are doing into January 6th. Uh, do you think in any way that there is starting to, that it's starting to become evident to some Americans a pattern of recklessness or lawlessness that seems to have infected <laughs> the, the, the past administration? You have him in the center of this investigation into uh, what, what, what happened on January 6th, but then you also have him really uh, allegedly or it's being <laughs> talked about that he took some really sensitive documents to Mar-a-Lago that would really fly in the face face of not just how we've done it in this country but some would say in the face of our security it just doesn't seem that they care about any sort of protocols that are put in place to facilitate things like the peaceful transfer of power or to safeguard American um, intelligence information. Do you feel like the case that's happening now in any way bolsters some of the, uh, the, the, the claims that people are making against Trump that have testified with the January 6th committee? I do. I do, because I feel that people have seen a portion of our hearings and they acknowledge and they now know and understand uh, that he has a propensity uh, not to be completely honest, uh, to surround himself with people uh, who want to meet the same objectives and goals uh, that he wants to meet above all else, uh, legal or otherwise. Uh, those are some of the, the pieces that we were able to uncover uh, in the January 6th committee hearings. And uh, what we laid out is that the president was in the Oval Office and his own lawyers said that this effort was unconstitutional and he proceeded. Uh, the president, we knew that the president had tweeted that the former vice president, you know, Mike Pence, uh, didn't have the courage uh, to do what was right. But what we didn't know until the hearings took place is that uh, at that time, he knew that there was violence in the Capitol. He knew that rioters were inside the building. So his tweet served as a message to them. Uh, and then we found out that the rioters were 40 steps away from Mike Pence and uh, that uh, some of them had indicated in uh, Department of Justice documents uh, that they would have likely killed him if they would have found him. So, you know, those are some pieces uh, that really uh, get to the character of the former president uh, that I think are informative in the current uh, Mar-a-Lago uh, discussions. You said that there will be future hearings, right, in regards to what the committee is doing. What will those future hearings entail? What type of witnesses are you looking for and what type of testimony? 
And if you haven't already, will that cross over with some of the investigations that are currently going on with with Mar-a-Lago? Does that change what you're looking for in regards to your testimony and witnesses? I don't believe it changes what we're what we're looking for. Um, but what we we left the hearings uh, talking about, you know, what happened on January 6th and January 7th. Uh, we still feel that there is more to tell related to the president, the former president's state of mind. Um, after that period, uh, from the 6th, 7th, 8th, uh, through January 20th, when uh, President, then President-elect Joe Biden was sworn into office. We feel that it's, a, it's informative uh, to share with people what the, the former president's state of mind was during that time, uh, to take people into uh, what, was, what was happening. Uh, we also feel that there's more information that uh, continues to come our way. Uh, we've uh, public reports have talked about the Secret Service uh, discussions and missing text messages. Uh, what exactly were they planning for on January 6th? Uh, we feel that there's more to unravel uh, there. Uh, we feel that this is a separate track than the Department of Justice is is going through, though. But uh, we do feel that it's informative to tell the full and complete story about what happened on January 6th. Pete, I got a small bone to pick with you. I like you a lot, but I have to pick this bone. I saw an interview with you about a month ago. When you were describing Mike Pence's uh, his conduct subsequent to the January 6th attack, and you said that he acted presidential um, during the time that he made the decision to not overthrow the government, <laughs> he made the decision to uh, sort of wrangle in uh, whatever forces or powers that he needed to in order to facilitate the peaceful transition of power. And you came under some fire for that because a lot of people would say that it's not prudent to congratulate Mike Pence for doing what essentially is his job. And they were yeah. asking for the bottom of the barrel from some Republicans when it comes to what it is that they're supposed to be doing. And that others might even say that the Democrats are too quick to be congratulatory and conciliatory to Republicans for basic decency. Do you understand those criticisms? And why did you say that Mike Pence acted presidentially uh, by not helping Trump overthrow the government? Yeah, I think I think it's a it's a great question, and uh, some of my family members have asked the same thing. Man. But <laughs> I'll, I'll give I'll, and, and look. Let me let me have some equal time to explain it. And and you're right. The lowest common denominator, unfortunately, with with many of my Republican colleagues, is uh, basic decency and doing your job. Um, but what I what I said was in that moment, in that day he was the only one that was acting presidential. Uh, he was in an undisclosed location in the United States Capitol, um, and he was surrounded by Secret Service agents. Uh, there's been pictures of, of them. Uh, and he was the only one talking to military leaders on the phone, checking in with congressional leaders, Democrats and Republicans, asking them what they needed, how they were doing, uh, while he is tucked away uh, uh, un underground uh, in the United States Capitol. Um, that to me is a partisan Democrat. I need to be honest and to tell people that in that moment, in that day, he resisted the pressure that we knew the former president put on him for weeks uh, and he did his job. Uh, and for that, I would say that he did act uh, presidential um, because he had a focus on what the country uh, was doing, uh, how the country was feeling, what congressional leadership uh, was doing uh, to clear the Capitol and to carry on with business. So I would stick with that. And I, I will tell you, Chairman Benny Thompson said the same thing in his opening statement uh, for the hearing that I chaired uh, in June, uh, that Mike Pence did his job. And, and we, need to, we need to be able to say that. Um, now, I think he has been less than forthcoming with exactly the threats that he was facing that day, uh, the pressure that led up to it. We have heard from his attorney and his chief of staff, um, but he has not come uh, forward and, and talked with us. Uh, he has not shared that they were leading prayer circles um, uh, to start their day and that he was reading Bible passages as he ended his day and that members of his staff were praying and calling their pastors while they were tucked away thinking presumably that they could lose their lives. Uh, he hasn't shared any of that with us. And I think he could be more forthcoming, but I think his actions 
uh, were were uh, commendable, um, and I would say uh, still presidential uh, in that moment in that day. Are you looking forward to running with him on his ticket in twenty twenty four? Oh my gosh! (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I yeah, I'm gonna take a hard pass on that one, Dan. (laughs) Uh, Uh, Do you know? I mean, I. In some of these interviews, I have said, look, this is a guy who stood behind with a grin on his face is the former president was separating parents from from babies wow. um, at the southern border. I mean, this is a guy whose loyalty seemingly knew no bounds, um, but he decided to follow the Constitution, thankfully for all of us. Um, but that doesn't mean he's without fault for the five years he stood behind the guy. Do you think he'll tap back into that presidential spirit and, and come and testify before? The committee? Do you foresee that happening? Well, we've had conversations with um, uh, with his attorneys. Um, my hope is that uh, if he's asked, he would come before us. Um, and and my hope is that we we still get to a point um, where that happens. But uh, he has said publicly that it was one day in time, and that he wants to turn the page and move forward. Uh, so nothing leads me to believe he's very interested in in that. Um, but uh, it's our hope that we still, for the historical record, um, be able to tell a full and complete story that day. I think we need to hear from him. Why hasn't he been asked yet? Well, there's a lot of discussions, um, you know, about that and about the timing of this. Uh, we are under uh, some some time constraints, uh, and I think the committee has had you know a lot of discussions about this. Uh, there's still more. Uh, investigative steps uh, to proceed with, uh, and we're not closing any doors. Um, but to date, the committee hasn't made uh, um, a decision uh, to to ask him to come in. That's that's all I can say. There have been bipartisan calls to have the Justice Department brief um, Congress on exactly what was found uh, at Mar-a-Lago, even if it's you know to a specific committee, and even if those briefings are classified even if nobody ever knows uh the term the terms of the public because look i don't know what's classified what's not classified i thought when something was classified then that meant a bunch of guys sat around and said no one could ever know and then trump says it's not classified if i take it home that's crazy (laughs) my brother used to say that like when he would leave town to be like i'm not married when i leave town i didn't i I didn't know you could have standing orders like that (laughs) so look it it are are you for do you are you for having the justice department brief congress and having the intelligence community have conversations with you guys excuse me having the justice department have conversations on behalf of the intelligence community and really kind of sort out what exactly was found just so it in some way justifies what people call the unprecedented act of uh, searching the former president's home. Is that something that you would like to see Merrick Garland and the Justice Department do? Or are you okay with them just taking as much time as they need to investigate this in whatever way they see fit? They, they should take the time that they that they need in order to do the job and to get it done right and to prove that no one is above the law, including the former president of the United States. There can't be uh, a one justice a system for uh, those who are rich and former presidents and, and one for everyone else. And so they need to do their job. I will tell you, I would not support something that is a briefing to the entire, uh, you know, every elected official, because there are some of these elected officials who I don't think should be trusted uh, with this type of sensitive information. Um, but there is in Washington uh, speak, there's a group called the Gang of Eight, which is the the legislative leaders in the House and Senate and the intelligence chair and ranking member for Democrats, for Republicans. Um, maybe the intelligence community should brief those top eight legislative leaders uh, on exactly what they found, um, just so they know uh, what the threats are and, and what uh, could ten- potentially be out there. Um, but uh, I wouldn't support anything that was for all 535 elected officials. Uh, I don't think that that's necessary, but maybe for the, the closest uh, uh, intelligence individuals um, uh, they get a separate briefing. Do you have any idea why a former president would take classified information to his private residence? No, but this is something that, you know, he clearly uh, had done in the past. And some of the people who had briefed him in the White House indicated that he oftentimes tried to 
take the documents back um, with him to the residence. Uh, they would give him an iPad with the material just so they can ensure that they received it back from him. Um, uh, I do know that they had uh, a secure facility at one point in Mar-a-Lago so they could brief him. When we go into these classified settings, it's a, it's a closed door. It's got a separate lock on it, uh, no electronics, no devices on you at all. Uh, and usually you are shown documents and then they take them back. That's how this this works. Uh, the fact that he had some of these in, in briefcases and in boxes just laying around unlocked for, for many months and then a simple padlock potentially on a, on a basement door. Uh, I think it's a, incredibly scary. And the information that he had access to uh, that uh, could benefit uh, foreign countries is uh, there's volumes of it. And so uh, I think this is something that we absolutely need to take seriously and ensure that if, if you or I had access to these documents and wandered home with them, um, uh, we would not uh, be treated uh, uh, in a way uh, that, uh, that gives a lot of deference. And so we need to make sure that the laws apply evenly. You've stated before that your concern is that January 6th could happen again. With what happened at Mar-a-Lago and in the, in the FBI's investigation, how worried are you that another, like there's talk of a civil war, there's talk about this happening on a grander scale than January 6th, how worried are you that that could actually happen again? Because it seems no matter what you're doing, there are people who are going to support him and believe him and any rhetoric that he puts out there as an excuse as to why there were documents there or any of his behavior at this point. I'll just say broadly that I'm, I'm very worried. I'm very worried that uh, individuals are, are now uh, going to law enforcement, going to the FBI with, with, with guns and, and shooting. Um, you know, those, the Ohio incident uh, is deeply troubling. The Department of Homeland Security just put a memo out uh, on Friday indicating a heightened level of domestic threats as well. The FBI director has said this is uh, in the past testimony he gave indicated that domestic uh, terrorism uh, was the number one thing uh, that kept him up at night. Uh, that, that's all incredibly troubling. And and the common thread is that the former president enabled this. When he tells folks, you know, uh, stand back and stand by, uh, and he doesn't speak out against domestic violent extremism, uh, that's incredibly troubling because he's asking them uh, to just wait by and wait for his orders. And, and we received testimony uh, from one insurrectionist uh, that we played uh, in the public. And what scared me about that is the individual said, the former president asked me to do two things. He asked me to vote for him and he asked me to come on January 6th. And I felt I owed it to him to do both. And so there are people that, that feel this way and, and Rachel, nothing has changed. Um, uh, some of them got caught, some of them who came got charged, uh, but they still feel that way. Maybe for years during the Obama administration, they were able to, to kind of tuck it away and, and, and nobody gave them the ability to talk about it freely and openly. And now they have platforms. Uh, they have a, someone who had the highest office in the land who espoused these, uh, these beliefs, uh, told them it was okay, made up slogans and t-shirts, uh, rewarded them in every way. And so that that still scares me that there's a lot of people who uh, would do harm to the democracy and, and us as an institution and throw around words like civil war um, uh, just because uh, their their political person that they supported uh, wasn't successful. Last question for me. I personally believe that what happened on January 6th was intentional to the degree that it was supposed to be something that intimidated lawmakers um, from their constitutional duty to to transfer power to the candidate that beat Donald Trump in the 2020 election. I believe that. I believe that nothing that happens with this president is quite an accident. I think that uh, he knows what he wants to do. To that end, I'm wondering, do you believe that President Trump had classified documents in his personal residence with the intention of sharing that information with anyone outside of this uh, of the 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 intelligence apparatus or the lawmaking apparatus of this country do you believe that there is even the chance that the information 
uh, that was at Mar-a-Lago was going to find its way across a sea or an ocean somewhere to some um, unfriendly nation to the United States. Do you believe that that's possible with Donald Trump? Yes, given what we have seen so far, uh, I am deeply scared at the level of documents that he maintained in his possession, even after they asked him to return everything, even after uh, he received a subpoena uh, for anything that was classified or top secret. Uh, I'm deeply concerned that there were documents there that if they fell into the wrong hands uh, could pose a threat to our country. And I think he has proven that he's incredibly cavalier in uh, wanting to show off and, and show people things that make him feel important. Uh, and so in that respect, I, I, I do share that feeling uh, and I'm and I'm deeply scared about you know where this goes uh, and, and what the facts you know truly are uh, with his intentions uh, for those documents. Do you think that this investigation with Mar-a-Lago helps Trump's political, well, assuming that he might run again in 2024, do you think that this helps him? And then that's, I would also ask you, do you think this helps or hurts the GOP with everything that's going on? You know, it, it's clear from some public reporting that when this happened, when the search happened on, on Monday you know, Tuesday last week, uh, he actually felt that this was going to, you know, bring his supporters together, uh, that he was going to, you know, be able to, to to speak out and to tell them that this was the deep state who was acting out on him because he could win an election again. Uh, his his tone changed a little bit, and he's done everything from accusing the FBI to, to, to from planting documents, uh, to saying that these were attorney-client you know, documents now. Uh, so he really just has taken an approach to throw everything uh, at the wall. Uh, but I still remain, you know, scared about what those documents in entail. And I do, but I do feel that in his mind, he could, you know, shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and get away with it. Uh, that's exactly what he said years ago. And I think he still feels that way. He could be indicted. Uh, he could be uh, in trial. He could, he could, have so many other things happen to him and people will still believe him. He will still have a core group of 35, 38% of the country uh, that will believe him. And so we have to appeal. And that's been the goal of the January 6th committee. How do we appeal to everyone else? Um, Democrat, Republican, independent, how do we appeal to those folks to talk with them about a peaceful transfer of power, about the importance of protecting democracy and just how fragile it is? Pete, you're a nice guy. You're a nice mm -hmm. guy, Pete. Pete, what's the what's the most ratchet thing about <laughs> Pete? What's the most what's what's on Pete? What's Pete's dark side here? What what's your favorite R-rated movie? What's your favorite <laughs> site you shouldn't be going to? Pete, give me I gotta have something, Pete. You're too buttoned up. You're you, like you might just be the future of this damn party, Pete. Like no, like what like what, what what are you what is what is Pete into that you're what do you do that you're not supposed to be doing? Oh man, I'll tell you. You want to talk? Yeah, I can't. I can't really go MCU with you all day long, man. But uh, I'll tell you. You want to have me on like fantasy football, um, you know, chats and and put me on a pod, you know, with the Ringer crew on the sports side. Um, you know, LA Dodgers. I got over. I see you over there with the Dodgers. But, but you know, I usually have like three fantasy football teams going at any given time. When I'm on the plane, if I'm not working or reading memos, I'm checking on my team, who's injured, what's going on. Um, but I love, I love sports. Always have loved sports. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm a, I'm a nerd. I'm just, you know, I'm just hanging out here <laughs> trying to do my job protecting democracy. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, and we thank you for that. We thank you very much. Um, if we have any other questions on what's going on with January 6th, hopefully. You guys aren't just all doing this for show and their charges that come from this, hopefully. Uh, if we have any other questions, we'll reach out to you. Just, you know, try not to throw that presidential word, word around too much there, Pete. <laughs> I hear you, man. I hear you. You and you and my grandmother have the same feedback, so I got to listen now. I got to listen. <laughs> all right, man. Listen. Thank you so much for joining us today on Higher Learning. Rachel, what would you think about Pete? Pete Aguilar, what would you think about I thought Pete was nice. Pete's the man, right? You were a big fan. I like, I like, and you're not a fan of politicians. So I, don't I was like politicians, I was, but Pete had something. There was a warmth about Pete. There was, was a warmth, wasn't yeah, there? Pete How long has cool. he been in office? I don't know. I support Pete. Yeah, he's a he was really nice. He was great, and he played along. Church girl, church girl. Beyonce knows has a song called Church Church Girl. 
What does she say in the song? Let's look, let's read some of the lyrics from Church Girl. Okay. It's a song about Beyonce who is a church girl. And um let's 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 read look, ooh. I'm warning everybody, as soon as I get in this party, I'm going to let go of this body. I'm going to love on me. Nobody can judge me but me. I was born free. I'll drop it like a thotty. Drop it like a thotty. I said, now pop it like a thotty. Pop it like a thotty. Misa, drop it like a thotty. Drop it like a thotty. Church girls acting loose. Bad girls acting snotty. Twerk that ass. You came up out the South, girl. Ooh, ooh. I said, now drop it like a thotty. Drop it like a thotty. Bad girl at the naughty church girl don't hurt nobody. Oh, my God. She going to shake that ass in the tickle bitties. What? Both? You going to shake that ass in the tickle bitties at the same time? Jesus Christ, Beyonce. I'm going to back it up. Back it up. Back it up. I'm going to bust it, bust it, bust it. I see them gray sweats. Penis talk. I see a blank check. <laughs> I'm telling you, she's it's, look. It's just, she's gonna look. She's gonna go in. The, she's gonna shake that ass and the tickle bitties. It's like she's a church girl, and this is this got the Christians mad. And you sound like the bishop talking like that. How? The way you're reading her lyrics, it sounds very bishopy. How? Very how bishopy. Why? Patrick Woodney. But no, it's it's that's who that's that's who's who's. I like this shit. You know, I like it. You can like, <laughs> like, like, like you can be my daddy if you want to. Put your you lighters in the air. Get this motherfucking lady. Liddy, tickle bitties, bitties. Okay. Um, what's the what? Other than you having your moment singing her lyrics, what's the, what's the question? The question is, people are mad, man. The Clark sisters don't like that shit. No, the Clark sisters are fine with it. The Clark sisters, oh, the, they approved me. it. She so she samples a Clark, uh, one of the Clark sisters' songs. Oh, that's right. The Clark sisters like her. I forgot. Yeah, and so this bishop which is who you were embodying just now doing those lyrics, has preached from the pulpit about how wrong Beyonce is for this and calls out the Clark sisters and saying they never should have given her the opportunity to uh, say it. Donnie, give me the I audio. Mean, sample it. I want to preach to you, missionaries. I want to preach to you, elders. I want to preach to you, superintendents, pastors, and leaders. We're called to speak up. We're called to say something. Beyonce just released sacrilege. Hmm. Is that, that the was it? <laughs> the only thing I can account for some of this stuff is somebody done sold their soul to the devil. Now, this all I can say to you is this. When you sell your soul to the devil, you get the short end of the stick. Because you, you're not going to live but so long. And when you leave here, where you're going, you're going to be there forever. So it's not, it's not, it's not a good deal. I don't care what he gives you. But this piece of trash <laughs> shit that's released. And she named it Church Girl. Now, I had thought to try to read the lyrics to you, but I struggled to listen to them. <laughs> church Girl. Thotty. All right, that's enough. Um, <laughs> now, you see why, why I said you sound like him? I like the lyrics. No, you sound like him. I, I, no, you I don't sound voice. like him at you all. Said, I, you okay, were I was reading the lyrics with the emphasis that Beyonce wanted. Shake it like a thotty. Um, do you see any point that the bishop has here? No. You're a hypocrite. No. You're a hypocrite. Well, here's my Rachel, thing. Rachel, you're, 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 Rachel, you're. I you're, understand what Beyonce, Beyonce is getting the exact reaction that she wanted from, from this. And I think she wanted to ruffle feathers. I can't let you get off this tape. It is very similar to the call me by your name. It, 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 Montario messaging the underlying message with it. What are you going to tell me? I, first of all, I can't let you get this take off. Why? You wanted the heavy black dick teacher to be suspended and like get her job fucked up, right? 
Remember the heavy black dick teacher? I said she should have been suspended, yeah. Why? What's the difference? What's the difference in the heavy black... Okay, so here's the thing. The church is saying that this song is... The church is saying that this song is... Beyonce deems herself a Christian. She talks about God. You know what I mean? Back in the day when Beyonce was less popular, when she was going through a popularity thing after they kicked those girls out of Destiny's Child on the tour bus, when she when, when Beyonce was going through that, they, she literally would sing Amazing Grace at, at shows and it'd be like, she actually said it one time, let's see if they boo God. Mm-hmm. She, they would they would see, sing Amazing Grace. So the, the church, everyone thought that Beyonce was down with them. I'm not saying she's not, because you mm-hmm. know how I feel. Then she makes a song called Church Girl, Dick in the Sweatpants, yep. Pop It Like a Thotty, all of that stuff, right? The church obviously is not going to be cool with that because they have a standard. What I don't understand is how people make the exception. I don't think either of them are wrong, but if a teacher can't say heavy black dick without getting admonished by the school, why is it improper for the church to admonish someone that they feel like is their own when they're saying pop it like a thotty, okay. stick it in the butthole, she jump on it. She didn't say stick it in the... It, church what, girl. What lyric would refer to stick it in the butthole? It said the butthole is the remix. Okay, Go stop. Ahead. Listen, the reason I say, I say I'm okay with this song is because I think that Beyonce was basically coming, not coming at the church, but kind of playing off of the people accusing her for not being faithful or spiritual because of what she wears, because of how she dances. So to me, this is a message back in their face. So when she's like, pop it like a thotty, I don't think that she's saying when you dance a certain way, you're a thought. That's what people say about her. So to me, that's how I took this whole song. It's like, you're calling me this. Well, then I'm just going to I'm I'm going to sing about it. I don't think she thinks you're a thotty if you pop it like that. That's what they say. That's why she used, calls it church girl. That's why she used this song. I think she did it to get this type of reaction. That is how I took You're this. somersaulting. No, that's she, really how I took all, it. Beyonce, I actually was having this conversation with somebody, this, Kalika. Mm-hmm. I, we, Kalika and I were talking about this before I even knew we were gonna. this was going to be a topic. Let me tell you something. Beyonce has been very sexual with her lyrics. That's a grown-ass woman. She talk about whatever she want to talk about. She said And she can mon- still be a church girl, which is what the point is what she was she saying. She said she, he Monica Lewinsky all on my blouse. That's a nut shot on the blouse. She been talking like this. It's not nothing new. Good for but her. But the church has been coming at her. The church has been coming at her because that, and this is why I don't understand. The church has been coming at her because the church has a standard. At least they purport to have a standard. I want to say one thing to everybody. Everybody Likes to Fuck. That's going to be a song that I come out with. The song is going to be called Everybody Likes to Fuck. And what gospel song are you going to use to sample? Or what gospel song are you sampling for? Never Should Have Made It. Okay. So I'm going to... Which they, we play in clubs now. I'm going to flip Never Should Have Made It. And the song is going to be called Everybody Likes to Fuck. Okay. And the song is just going to be basically naming different church jobs. The deacons, they like to fuck. They like to fuck. Oh, the ch- ch- church ladies, they like to fuck. Uh, they like to fuck. Yo, your pastor, he likes to fuck. Uh, the nigga who baptized you, he loves to fuck. Like, that's the song. The people in the church, they love to fuck. So the, we know this. We know churches from all over towns, people are fucking. They fucking in the church. They fucking on the side of the church. They fucking on the outside of the church, in the inside of the church. They're fucking in the fucking church <laughs> chambers. They're fucking in that. They, they, we know this. Human beings fuck each other. It's a thing. But what I'm saying is this. It's all about appearances. And, and to me, when I see people get prudish about things, I wonder why they don't hold their favorite stars like Beyonce to those same standards. I'm not being prudish about stuff. I, but you you have been in the past. Okay, I don't think the teacher example fits this. But what I will say is the reason I think it's hypocritical from people in the church is gospel artists use secular music sample. And it's not considered a problem, even though you're using an artist beat or an artist maybe even taking some of their hook and yeah you're putting it with the mixing it with religion i mean with a religious song religious lyrics but you're still using somebody like a, and you're doing that to attract people into the word i get it i understand it i'm not against it but it's not a problem when people do that so i yeah i just i have a problem with the song or they do collabs with rap do what they artists. Do. my thing is this 
You're reaching with the teacher thing. I'm not reaching. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit. But yeah. like, but but what I'm saying is, it is the same thing. <laughs> okay. If you can look at somebody and say a tweet that you sent out makes it makes you uh makes you unqualified to work here or breaches some kind of morality clause, certainly the church can say that Beyonce totally is not can. moral enough to be down with it. The nigga saying now I'd saying say they that can't she say saying it. that she sold her soul to the devil is is is, is you know come on man but 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 like obviously if church people are mad about this we, we, we my point is the people that are defending beyonce there's nothing wrong with church girl there's nothing the people that are defending beyonce are defending beyonce because she's beyonce like that's the reason why and other people other particularly women that want to express their sexuality in ways nobody comes to their defense when people jump all over them, they actually like say, who? you shouldn't have been done this. Like the teacher that was talking about the heavy dick. Nobody was defending her. You should know how to act. Beyonce coming out, you got dick in your sweatpants, popping like a thotty. We're, 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 it has nothing to do with women expression and sexuality. We say, or oh, one time, there's a time for place for that. And then in the other, in the other situation, we say, hey, well, they can't be mad at her. It's Beyonce. They're mad because they're the church. You're reaching. Yeah, okay. You're so, so reaching. Yeah, you maybe. know it. I just want you to admit that you were wrong about the heavy black dick thing, but you won't. It's okay. We disagree. Or the, the or the fam you chick. I had no problem with the fam you chick. I know, but nobody was coming to the fam you chick. A lot of people came to her defense. Nah, man. A lot of people did. Nah. Uh, she hasn't got her degree conferred yet. Look, you know what? It's time to get out of here. Donnie, what do you think? Do you think I have a point on the um the the uh the heavy black dick chick as here's it relates your, to Beyonce? Here's your um, Yeah, you challenging me. No. Here's your time. I oh. think it's I think it's a stretch. But I feel like the church has been after Beyonce for a minute. They uh there's been like conspiracy theories with her being an Illuminati, being like oh, that's, a that's devil a good, worshiper. That's, that was Satanist. that's my era right there. That's my era. Yeah. That that was the best era. Illuminati. The Jay Z and Beyonce <laughs> are in the Illuminati era. That's the best era. Whatever. Can we talk about one last thing before we go and how it relates to Twilight? The movie. Yeah. What? Did you ever see Twilight? I did see Twilight. Did you like Twilight? Yeah. Okay. So I had a problem with Twilight. Okay. Kalika is very into Twilight. She enjoyed the movies. We will go see Twilight. I see. I binged it. So I don't know if I would have appreciated if I waited for the movies to come out. I watched it all at the same time. So it was like a soap opera for me. It just kept going and going and going. Do you know what happens at the end of Twilight? Mm -hmm. So remember, what's her name? Bella? Bella. She becomes a vampire. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Oh, nigga, fuck it. <laughs> that yeah, shit is she old. becomes a vampire. They have a kid. She becomes a vampire. They have a kid. That's what happens to Bella. Twilight. Okay. When they have a kid, she has a kid with Edward. When they have a kid, Jacob, the wolf dude, werewolf, yeah, yeah, imprints on the kid. Mm -hmm. Okay. I took that to mean that in the future he's gonna have a love with the kid. Is that how you took it? Let's look it up right now. He imprinted, Jacob imprints on the kid, and I feel like they're going to be together when she I just thought, older. I looked at it as like he was going to protect her, which is how they left it. Jacob, he was going to protect her and care for her. Look, Jacob imprinted on Renee Samay Cullen, the daughter of Bella Swan and Edward Cullen. All right. It says, Jacob has a strong bond with her, is more of a protector as she gets older, will be Thank a best you. friend. Thank you. I'm gonna be honest with you. You're nasty. I don't think that that's what mean. What that's what that means. You're, you're, I think he imprinted on her, and he nasty. is it, it, like it, like it, it says right here. This means that Jacob is not in love with Renessa May, at least not yet. Until she grows up to become adult, he would act more like her protector. They're eventually going to be together. What website are you? Are you? I'm looking from a bunch of different websites. <laughs> we need to talk about the creep, the creepy Jacob, and Renessa May twist but like the part that bothers me isn't that he ends up with Bella is that he imprints on the th this is a thing but the general definition of of imprinting 
doesn't mean that. It means like to recognize somebody is as it, somebody you trust and protect, almost like a parent. It's that's not, what it means. That's not what they doing. They the imprinting thing was a way for Jacob to have a relationship with her later on. I promise you. I guess this we've just reached the point in the show where you reach the point in the show where you want to reach on every single. I'm not reaching on anything. By the way, what are you, I, going, wait, but what are you about I, to connect this to? This story about yeah, this dude. See what I'm saying? So this guy <laughs> met his wife when she was a baby. Now she's pregnant with our child. How old is she? She's 29. Oh. He's 48. So? So they didn't even realize that they had met before. She was a baby. Even better. She had been introduced to her mother, Sarah Owen. When Rich and Sarah were introduced, they were introduced. They had worked at the same street. Rich, Rich realized that he had seen Evie as a baby and pushed her around in the stroller. It was a bit freaky when I realized I'd met Evie as a baby, but I had no idea at the time. We just laughed about it. Age is just a number to us. If you, I've been mistaken for Evie's dad before, but most people can see how well we click. The 19-year-old age gap doesn't bother us at all. Everybody's up in arms over this. I don't understand what's the point. They didn't. It's not like he met her when she was young and he waited till she was ripe. Okay, that's not what he did. She's 29. He's 48. Imprint. 19. Is that 19 years? 19 years 19 difference. Years. Like, what's the big deal? Why is everybody upset? No and he did deal. not imprint he on imprinted. her style. I'll tell y'all one thing right now. Seriously. What happened at the end of Twilight is not okay. Okay, man. We all know. Who have, has y'all, Donnie, have Never you seen Twilight? Never saw it that way. Have you seen Twilight? I haven't. Look, look at this. There's a twisty bit of lore where she wrote and tried to cover to see, look, is that's not it. For talk brother, it's a romantic sexual couple. Jacob looks at Rissa May and sees, I don't know how to say his name, and sees their future. And the conclusion is a romantic relationship that actually happens. Let's repeat that. Jacob looks at a baby and envisions a relationship with Rissa May that is romantic. He looks at a baby and is supernaturally compelled to event an eventual romantic pursuit. He looks at a baby. That's what happens. I'm glad you were able to scroll down until you found the website. That's what happens. That, no, because the first one you read said what I said. I'm glad that you were able to find it. Look, if it happens, it happens. Who cares? It's fictional. She, he she, waited till she, she got of age. She grows up magically. She ages super fast. She'll be growing Great. up he and didn't stop have to wait aging long. by time. telling you. All right, <laughs> right. that's fine. Just like, I'm going to be honest with you. I always thought that that was so now everybody that thinks this is weird you know how I feel because when I first saw that I was like that's not okay first of all don't imprint shit on my baby get away you a wolf you imprint on your own babies you don't imprint on my babies that's the first thing don't no imprint secondly it's weird there is no second they move on to the, you got a very serious question or not Hey, Drew, how come it's like, it's the, as the What's podcast wrong? goes further, mm -hmm. it seems like you and Snake I knew it was coming. Killer are against me. Donnie, you're going to have to just agree with something. Donnie never agrees with you're me. You're right. I'm against you. I agree. All yeah. right. Are you okay. happy? I, I do have a very serious question. Okay. I'll put it in my Twitter drafts real quick. D you Donnie, whatever he asks, don't answer. <laughs> Donnie, you know what? Go ahead and answer it because I'm going to start. I, I'm I'm going to, you're going to find yeah. out, Donnie. You're going to learn. I, I'm, I can't wait to get even with you. All right, where do you find your Twitter drafts at? Where are they at? Okay, this is Van's very serious question of the week. I was thinking about this. Okay. When we were coming up, and we were looking to categorize Jay-Z as somebody. They said that Jay-Z was the new age Frank Sinatra. Do you remember oh, this? I didn't know they said that. Donnie, do you remember this? Yeah, I feel like he said it more than... I people. Sinatra shot you, goddamn you. Question. This is Van's very serious question of the week. Have we reached a point where Jay-Z is more famous than Frank Sinatra. Is Jay-Z more famous than Frank Sinatra? Yes. You say yes. Mm-hmm. 
Donnie? Yeah, that's a tough question, but I got to go yes, too. You're going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. It's a different generation now. It don't matter. Oh, that's what I would say. That's why I would say it. It. I, I'm going to say that Jay-Z is more famous and more relevant in American culture than Frank Sinatra. In 2022? Yes. Well, what else? Frank Sinatra died. Well, no, but I, I am my basis. It's definitely is not the because, same in, in 1972. Well, my Jay Z ba- wasn't born. Uh, Jay Z was born, but my, he was I'm basing a baby. it off of the generation where we are right now, and I think young people either don't, aren't going to know who Frank Sinatra is, and if they do, they don't understand what Sin- Frank Sinatra meant when he was in his prime or when he was around or the impact that he's had in. Pop that culture play, that plays into Jay Z though, because is Jay Z more famous than Michael Jackson? No. No. Is Jay Z more famous than Mick Jagger? No. Is Jay Z more famous than uh, Paul McCartney? No. Is Jay Z more famous than John Lennon? No. There's a bunch of people that Jay Z is still not more famous than that are from the old school. I just don't think that Frank Sinatra oh, think is one Jay, of them. I, see, if, if I'm basing it off generation, uh-huh. I would still say more than John Lennon. You think Jay Z is more famous than John Lennon? Based, I think if you ask this generation Z, I think that Jay Z would be, and that's what I'm based on because I feel like the the people who would say he's more relevant aren't with us as much anymore as the new generation. See, my my basis is different from yours. That's why. That's why I would answer it in that way. But Jay Z is not more famous than John Lennon right now. I don't think so. John Lennon is one of the Beatles. I I know that. And we continuously do Beatles stuff, right? Like we still make Beatles are very, there's like movies, there's books, all this Beatles. stuff is still coming out. Beatles, Beatles, Beatles. But if you're talking about in a group wise, then yeah. But when you start getting into an individual sense, I think for this generation, it would be Jay-Z. Well, this is me. I'm not talking about for a specific generation. But that, but that's my basis for, that's my guess, where my yes comes from. But that's from. not, but. That's, that's your that's your yes. But that's not the question, though. It is the question. The question is overall, who's more famous? And you gotta have a reason for why you're saying but it. But it's not just one generation that we're comparing it to. It's the world. I it's I, like it's like who's more famous in the world. And I think there's more of them than there are of the, the time that people would say he's more relevant. I think we would look at it in a different way than the people younger than so us. So we just had my mama on Petty Cash Queen. So, oh, so they just don't matter. All of them, no, because it's a bunch of them. They but more old. relevant. What is what? What's the age, real quick? We got. I don't go. know. What's I don't the know. Age that you feel like people stop knowing about John Lennon. It's not that they stop knowing. You're asking who's more relevant. I didn't ask who. Oh, was wait, more what was relevant? the question again? <laughs> what was the question? I didn't ask more. What was relevant. the question? I was like, who's more famous? Who's Jay-Z more famous? Fine. Or John Lennon? Fine. Right now. In the whole world, though. Right now. But in the whole world, not just with Gen Z. In the whole uh, world. Okay, in the whole world, I'd probably say John Lennon. Oh, you heard that? It's time to go. My yeah, stomach's rumbling. <laughs> My stomach's so rumbling. So, Jay-Z, you say more famous than Frank Sinatra. Oh, I yeah, agree. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is Jay-Z more famous than John Lennon? It's up in the air. We don't know. <laughs> uh, Scooby-Doo gang, what do y'all say? Who's more famous out of Jay-Z and John Lennon? I, I'm going with Beyonce's husband. <laughs> John Lennon. John Lennon. He white, though, so, you know, he will he, what he will say. All right. Uh, take the caps <laughs> off, but do not stop learning. Higher learning is going to bring you, just to let you guys know, I'm going to Greece on Thursday. Yes. We're very excited for you. We're going to Greece, Kalika and I. We're going to be out. Higher Learning is going to uh, give you some of the best interviews that we've had next week. Yeah. We're going to give you an interview with uh, Blitz the Ambassador. Mm Mm-hmm. Fantastic. We're going to give you an interview with Glasses Malone. These are both can't-miss interviews, okay? Uh, But, yeah, so take your think caps off, but do not stop learning. I want you guys to think about this Jay-Z question. Is Jay-Z... More famous than Frank Sinatra or John Lennon? I say yes. 
<laughs> thank you, thank you all for all the nice I learned I'm Valentine Jr. I'm Rachel and Lindsay. We out.